So uh, many coaches these days use um, their phones or their iPads or other portable devices to record athletes and play back information for them. Uh, one of the problems they have often is those devices are rather small and they can work one-on-one -on -one with a player, but it's sometimes helpful to have a larger monitor. So how do we get one on the court uh, and how do we do it in a way that protects it? So a number of years ago, uh, probably two or three years ago, some of my students at Illinois Institute of Technology worked on a project for, uh, for our volleyball club uh, to come up with a monitor system that was pretty large and capable to be rolled around on the court. Uh, I have uh, since uh, moved to a different part of the country and I'm coaching high school volleyball and I would like the same sort of thing, only maybe a smaller version. So I'm going to share with you how I've built a smaller version for use in my gym. Maybe you can use it as well. Again, we're using Apple devices. Uh, so we're using screen mirroring capability from those devices to use applications like BAM Video Delay or um, Coach's Eye or Dartfish or, or anything, even YouTube, uh, could be used with this in certain circumstances and I'll cover that a little bit later. So uh, here you see um, actually the one that's sitting in my living room right now. It hasn't been deployed yet. It's still under construction, but it's, it's close to finished. And uh, I wanted to kind of walk you through that. Um, before I get started, I'd like to dedicate this video to Mike Hewlett, a mentor of mine. Uh, many of you know him. Uh, he passed away recently and he was an inspiring mentor and friend and I learned a lot from him. Uh, he encouraged the first version of this process, uh, this project, and uh, meant a lot to me. So hopefully, uh, hopefully he's uh, playing volleyball in a better place. So moving on, uh, let's talk about how this thing is built. So uh, I've got a couple of views of it. Uh, here's a good view to kind of get started. So what I did was uh, I decided I would make a wood frame. This is based on the design of our larger system. Uh, and basically you have um, uh, a uh, two by four frame. I bought three two by fours uh, for the basic top and bottom of this frame. You'll see the front and the back and these sides. This is a four foot section, so a two by four divided in two, uh, and uh, the top is the same. Uh, then I've taken a, a two by four and cut it into one foot lengths for these cross pieces. Uh, they are spaced apart enough to allow another two by four to be inserted. Uh, so basically what I did was go ahead and screw uh, these um, cross pieces together to form the bottom frame and the top frame, as you can see. Uh, these are uh, two and a half inch wood screws. I'll have a parts list uh, uh, available so you can see what I used. Then we uh, took and had these three foot pre-cut uh, two by fours available from Home Depot in their lumber section. They have some pre-cut uh, lumber. You could cut three footers yourself, but I just wanted to forego the, the work and put this together. So again, you can see kind of the three, the four screws here uh, in each corner, and that forms the frame. The two by fours, these two by fours are then drilled through, so you need a long drill bit because this is one and a half inches times three, so four and a half inches. So you need five inch long carriage bolts. A carriage bolt is uh, kind of got a flat head on one side, and uh, then you have a bolt and washer on the other side, sorry, a nut and washer on the other side. So basically these uh, are drilled through, threaded through and bolted, both on the top and the bottom, and you've got a basic frame to work with. I then uh, took a one by 12 and mounted it to the back frame to allow for mounting the uh, television screen. So here you can see the screws that we use. Um, most of the time if you buy a box of these screws, they come with a little bit that you can use for uh, with your uh, either your impact driver or a um, uh, power drill. You can certainly do it by hand, but trust me, you'll, you'll like to have the power unit, so borrow one if you don't have one. Um, then we had the frame, but we needed to put a base on it, so I bought a 2 by 4 um, foot um, fiberboard and had it cut to 16 inches 
uh, at Home Depot. And uh, so I have an eight inch, eight inch wide piece left over. We'll use that later. Uh, we mounted these casters. These are two inch non-marking casters. Um, I used three quarter inch, one quarter, one quarter inch gauge, uh, three quarter inch bolts and this thing called a T-nut. Here's a, an example of a T-nut here um, and we'll see a closer view in a, in a minute. But uh, T-nuts have little tabs on them that dig into the wood when you um, tighten the screw. So the idea here with three quarter inches is when you used a three quarter and tightened it up, it was about flush with the other side of this uh, three quarter inch uh, fiber board. And that was important because we needed flush uh, mounting in order to be able to put the frame on top of this this um, this uh, base. So if you have a better idea that go you want to move these someplace else, you can kind of play around with that. But that worked for this build. Um, so uh, you can see it here. Here's a T nut uh, dug in. Um, this one I didn't need to worry about the length of the screw because it was going down into the bottom. So uh, we've got a hex bolt that goes a little deeper here. These hex bolts are all bolted in and in the to a, again, these are three quarter inches long that go through here and tighten up that T-nut on the other side. Uh, a, a really good way to attach this. So um, I'm gonna move ahead a little bit. So here you have kind of the base uh, unit um, without the protective elements that I'm gonna introduce in a little bit. But here again, this is the frame. One of the things I, I realized after the fact was I didn't need this, this board on the top frame. So you can see the holes where I removed it. Um, it's really sturdy the way it is and um, I was this was blocking the view of the monitor. So um, if you wanna, you can save yourself a four foot two by four if you don't build it in to begin with or if you find it easier to build it that way and then modify it, that's fine too. That was a learning that I went through. Um, so that gives you an idea. Um, this is a one by 12. I cut it to sh just a little bit shorter than three feet. So I had a little bit of gap and bolted it to the frame. Um, there are four holes carefully drilled in the back to allow this monitor to be mounted. Uh, it uses 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter visa mount, which is really pretty typical. Um, there are some that are 100 by 100 and 300 by 300 millimeters. Um, I used M6 um, bolts that were 35 millimeters long in order to mount this to here. Your mileage may vary on the depth of the bolts. That's one you'll have to kind of figure out for yourself. Um, let me talk about the electronics be before I go into the protection elements. We used Apple TV to hook to the monitor. Um, we've got an HDMI cable and a power cable. Uh, we've got some power supply. And uh, I added a, a Wi-Fi router. This is an old, I'm 2009 vintage, um, Apple uh, Extreme, but you can use anything you got laying around. Get a parent to donate one that they've gotten rid of. Uh, this is an older Apple TV. Uh, generations two and three work just fine. They still support screen sharing and that's all you need. Um, you can certainly put more current equipment in if you choose. Uh, the idea of having a dedicated uh, Wi-Fi hotspot is to um, keep from getting any lag in the signal because you're sharing signals with other people hitting the Wi-Fi. The negative to that is this is not hooked to the internet. So uh, you could wire it into the internet and have that, but with it unwired to the internet, you can't play any video unless it's stored on your phone or stored. Uh, there is a disk drive in this Apple Extreme. I wouldn't recommend using that. I just, whatever you want to show should be on your iPad or your iPhone. Um, that said, uh, I am looking into connecting directly to our um, school Wi-Fi and seeing if that will work well enough. If it does, we you could eliminate the need for this Wi-Fi router. So you can try that out for yourself. But uh, in the case of our original build, uh, a dedicated Wi-Fi router turned out to be a pretty good idea. Um, your folks may be able to configure your Wi-Fi network to give you some dedicated bandwidth and you can eliminate this component. So, a couple of things here. Uh, you can see here we've added polycarbonate strips to protect the uh, monitor. They don't have the, uh, I haven't transported it to school yet, so you can see that uh, I haven't uh, pulled off the protective paper yet. You can also see 
a couple of places where we've um, attached the um, base, uh, sorry, the uh, frame to the base. The, um, I've used four bolts to do that. One here offset to avoid conflicting with this one by 12 here. There's another one hidden over here on the other side, kind of symmetrical to this. And then there's one halfway on each side of uh, the outside of the frame. And that works just fine. Um, so we've got these uh, strips. The strips were sourced from McMaster Car, a distributor. They actually, dist you can order from them different sizes of these. I ordered a 1 8 inch thick, four, 48 inch uh, length and by 2 inches wide, uh, which, I, I, which are spaced at about 4 and a half to 5 inches, uh, which will, pre will, will stop a volleyball from going through, stop a basketball from going through. Haven't tested a football. I think it's okay for that, but you might have to tighten these up a little bit for football. Um, we may have to deal with that uh, going forward because there may be some interest on the football side. But for now, this works fine. We're attaching them with wood screws and what they call, um, oh, what are these called? Fender washers, wider washers, but you probably could go with standard washers as well um, just to make sure it's, it's connected. Um, let me show you one or two other things. So you can see that um, where we attach to the top of the frame, these two attachments, they go all the way to the edge. They're four feet long. They're not bent over. Um, got one connector up here. And um, you can see where we're connected here. There's another example. What I wanted to show you, here's a, a good example of kind of how they're connected. So uh, I probably could put another washer and um, screw here, but I'm going to leave it for now. The top's not going to get very much action. Um, now, on the um, if you if you look at this, um, the polycarbonate will stick out about an inch or so past the end uh, on these in the mounting of the up uh, the uprights. And so, what I did was I used a heat gun heated it up and bent the polycarbonate in order to um, go ahead and attach it. Uh, it is possible to bend polycarbonate without heat. Um, in this tight a bend, I don't think it would have worked very well. All I really did was heat it here. You get a little, you, you probably see a little bit of melting of this. I moved it back a little bit, but there's a little bit of melting there. And basically you can just bend this around the corner and then attach it. Um, so that worked out pretty well. Uh, I don't know why I keep getting this. Uh, oh, let me go back. Um, I've done that twice now. So uh, there's the attachment of the back. Um, the last step before we deploy this, uh, and by the way, I did do some sanding on all of this because this is rough lumber. So if you have a sander available or can borrow one, it's a really good idea if you use rough lumber. If you use more finished lumber, it will cost you more, but it will save you some sanding. Um, so I tried to take the edge off. There still are some potential for splinters, so we need to be a little careful with it, but uh, it's pretty, pretty good shape now. And then lastly, we took a, uh, that 8-inch that uh, remaining fiberboard and cut it into strips and then used uh, carriage bolts and wing nuts to attach it uh, to the back to protect the back of the unit. We, uh, there's our wing nuts. And that allows us to uh, not, you know, we can remove these fairly easily to pull this off. And if we want to put another uh, bigger monitor in, it's a relatively easy thing. We could probably scooch it in here, but by taking these off, it opens up a lot of opportunities. So it's nice to have that set up. So that's basically the, uh, the whole unit. Uh, I hope you find this helpful. I will uh, post a list of the materials and the costs that I... Uh, I put together for this. Um, I didn't include tax, so you'll have to include some monies for tax and that sort of thing. But it'll give you an idea of what it might take to do something similar to this. I hope that's helpful to you, and uh, hopefully, uh, maybe you'll build one of your own.